I can do slightly better that hand waving when it comes to saying how fast the helix falls. You remember your kinetics. The tau it would take to form a helix is, again, roughly proportional to some sort of time constant for the fundamental processes. And that would basically be forming a hydrogen bond that happens in a nanosecond or so. Multiplied by exponential raised to plus the barrier, right? But that barrier should now be F init divided by KT, where init is the barrier for initiating the alpha helix formation. But that is the energy that we would take to start it at one specific residue. If we have n zero residues in the chain, there are n zero different points where that can happen, right? And from the last slide, you saw that n zero was roughly proportional to e raised to plus f in it divided by two kt two. So we should divide the time by that. So time helix anywhere is roughly proportional to tau. Well, this is just going to be the logarithm loss, so I will have a factor of two in the nominator instead. E raised to plus f in it divided by 2 kt there. Do the math. We're going to take f in it, and when we divide by this, that means subtracting the value of that exponent here. So f in it by kt minus f in it divided by 2 kt leaves the other half f in it by 2 kt. But we also knew roughly what the f in it here was. The f in it was in the ballpark of, say, two, 4 or 5 kcal divided by 2 kt. And the tau process here was in the ballpark of, say, a nanosecond. Again, order of magnitude estimates. This factor is going to be, say, 500 to 1,000. Uh, so that would mean that we predict that helices would form, again, in the ballpark of a microsecond. And that actually works quite well. The fastest helix formation might be in the ballpark of 100 nanoseconds, and the small, slowest one might be a factor 100 or so slower. So even this super simple estimated kinetics rate turned out to serve us exceptionally well. The other thing that I think this shows is that don't sweat the factors of two. Because if I get things right within an order of magnitude here, that error is likely going to be lower than the estimates we have for salt concentrations, the amount of protein, the length of the chain, etc. There are many factors we're ignoring here. But this is about understanding. And when we get to beta sheets in particular, you will show that the important thing here is going to be to understand the differences that corresponds to five or ten orders of magnitude, not the factor ten.